Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Bit of a vlog style video today. Perfect antidote for all the doom and gloom out there. So let's get started. And we're back. So, made a list here because there's a few things I want to discuss and a few things I want to show you. I don't want you when you begin in this video. I'm always usually a few videos ahead of you. Um, <coughs> it's mid-March as I film this and I thought I'd just show you some of the changes and how that's affected me in terms of cost. So just as a, a quick recap, so it cost me £106 to heat the entire greenhouse in December and then in January it cost me £92 and then in February it cost me 97 so it actually went up from January to February. February was a horrendous month, it was really miserable and wet and really low temperatures. So far in March, it's not exactly been cracking the flags out there, but uh, it has been cheaper. Um, it's like averaging two, three pound now, there was a, there was a one pound there. Two, two to three pound whereas in February you know I was getting four and five pounds some nights so what I've had to do is the heater down here I've increased it a little bit so that my temperature now is going to be 12 degrees as a that's the that's the temperature that I set it at it's 14 in here at the moment um, I've set it to 12 degrees rather than <coughs> I had it on about eight it just in an attempt to try and save some money um, <coughs> and we know what happened there. So we know the Bourgeois didn't like that and uh, started to show signs of not only cold damage but of sun damage as well, which is why I now have the shades up. You can't see them. I have got the, uh, <coughs> the Mars Hydro lights on in here. That's why it looks like it's sunny. But I've put the shades up, which is a shame to block out the sun. I mean, especially when it's like still well it was at the time about seven degrees outside it's a bit warmer now it's about 10 or 11 at the moment as i film this so anyway let's have a look so that, that's the cost so i've increased it again to 12 on the cold side of the greenhouse just because i don't want to lose any more of these plants to cold damage yeah so so other other damage that that we had from we had a week up here anyway we had about five days of sunshine um, and you can see the this is Nepenthes, I think it's Gaia this one, uh, yeah, Nepenthes Gaia. Uh, you can see how it, the leaves go, go red, the, these were up in the eaves up there, so I've brought them down. It's actually nice, I can see them a bit close, more closely here. <coughs> it doesn't seem to have suffered too much other than the leaves have gone red and I don't really want that, I prefer them to be green, I think they prefer it too. So I brought that down here. The other one, the Berkey Eye. Um, let's just check. Yeah, Berkey Eye. This one doesn't seem quite as worried about it. You can see it has begun to go a little bit, a little bit red, but the new growth is still green. But I brought it down anyway, and again, you can you can see the pictures better down here. Uh, some new ones down here. That one's about to pop. So yeah, and even this one. This one's Ventricosa, this one started to go a little bit red as well. So, I thought it was time that the shading went up. There's got to be a point, hasn't there? <coughs> Pardon me, Dendrobium kingianum. I'm still not quite in flower. I've not ever seen this in flower yet, but uh, it shows that certainly didn't mind going down to lower temperatures. Um, if anything, it seems to have brought it on a little bit more. So well, that is about to do its thing. It looks very close, in fact, in the leaf, in the uh, bloom shape, the bud shape, to the Berryoda, which just keeps going and going and going and going. That's a wonderful plant. I'm really pleased about this. Um, <coughs> my, pellies, my pelagoniums are about to come out, which will be great. Not that it says summer more than pelagoniums, so I'm really pleased that's about to come out. Um, these ones are as well. I did lose one, I lost uh, like a trailing one, but I took some cuttings of it before it completely gave up the ghost and uh, I think I think they've survived, so I think we're okay with them. Uh, I've ordered more streps, my streps are looking great at the moment, nice and green, ready to, ready to do their thing. I still think they're a few weeks away yet from shooting flowers spikes up. 
I've ordered some of the Harlequin varieties. And I've also ordered a new a new plant for me called the uh, um, Coleria, which is part of the Jesneriadaceae. If I've said that correctly, I'm not reading that. Also from memory, um, from that family. So well, I'll have to look up and look them up. I know I know it is a rhizome that's coming, so we'll have a look at that, and uh, <coughs> that might be a new one to get into. <coughs> and me, you can see down there, I all those little tiny cuttings that I took, I've potted those up in peat and I managed to get myself some perlite, peat and perlite, although I still wonder whether vermiculite is a better thing, because vermiculite is better for water retention than perlite, but uh, the advice from the the website that I got them from, the, from Dibley's, that, that you know, they are grow, a big grower of streptocarpus, they say perlite and a soilless compost, a peat based compost. So that's what I put it in. So we'll see. Well, some, of the, some of these, I mean these over here are in not only perlite free, so they, these have vermiculite and they're also in a, a peat based, oh, hang on let's get that right, a soil based compost, they're in jacks, they're in uh, like a John Innes compost and I mean they don't seem that bothered do they, they seem quite happy, they're very green so uh, It'll be interesting to see the difference. This one here, for some reason, is just going crazy. That perhaps that's in some super duper miracle compost. Um, okay, so what else have I got on my list here? Yeah, so this is the cold side. Everything else is looking okay. The Cambria, lots of new growth down there on the Cambria. So to Annum, don't know if I can see any new growths on it, but I mean, yeah, <coughs> that one in the middle. Um, I can't point at it because I don't have a third hand, unfortunately. But that one in the middle is a newish one. So, and that one there, next to my finger, there, that's a newish grow. So that seems okay. Over here, the twinkles that I wrapped up here in moss. Again, new growth in there, right in the centre. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, another one down there coming. So that one's on its way. Quite happy with that one. The little tiny twinkle, they're both cinnamon twinkles, they just kind of came apart, so I thought I'd put one separately, mount one separately. That's got a growth at the back there. So that's happy. Now uh, this is gonna flower soon. Epidendrum, Comet Valley Orange Star. A growth up there. That did suffer a little bit with the cold, but you see a black leaf there. That, I think that's the cold that's caused that. It does say, it did say they can go down actually. What did it say? 10. You know, I did I did drop below 10. I'll say it went to about 7 or 8 some night. Um, but I've, I've had to... Well, I thought to myself, well, if the... If I'm not paying as much during the day, because it's getting... The sun's getting up during the day, and it can go to 25 in here, even though it's still quite cold outside. Um, I thought, right, well, I'm saving on heating in the day, so I'll bump it up again to 12 at night. It'd be such a shame to lose them after coming so far through winter. The what's this one? Uh, the Stardust Firebird Dendrobium that's got loads of new growths on it now, loads of little uh, nubbins there. So I'm really pleased that looks like it's going to bloom. That's not suffered too much. I'm going through here to the warmer side. Now this massive catlia. Remember my how to not repot a catlia video. It had two new roots on it, and I was so chuffed with them. And then I came in one night. And some little bugger of a slug had eaten him off. Completely gone. Vanished. And uh, I caught it. I gave it a good talking to. And then lodged it over next door. And uh, but, I mean it, it is. You can see the, the uh, these nubbins are about to come. These new growths. These eyes. They're not really nubbins. Are they? The eyes are about to come. But... Uh, as far you know, these roots that I could see, they've they've been eaten. So whether it comes up with some more or not, I don't know. The epicat layer still in bloom. That's got just tons of new growth on it. I'm not worried about that in the slightest. I mean, a big orange no ID cat layer, if you remember from ooh, November would it be? No, it would have been December. That's gonna come again. So I'm really pleased, I'll be really pleased to see that so soon. Try to scan to just going stupid over here. There's two there, you've got a Zabrina on the right there and then you've got a red jewel here on the left the maiden's blush also i'm wondering whether to pinch these out to bush them up a little bit the Nepenthes rebecca so the one on the right is also 
about to show some flowers and the one over on the left they've not popped yet they're about to burst so the thing is I, I've only got Rebecca Soper in bloom I can't really cross pollinate so it's not really worth me doing anything with it I don't know if I can get any seeds from it or not I don't know but uh, it would have to self fertilize I guess wouldn't it so Burrigera the one that completely changed in a week through I don't know whether it was cold or sun I'm not sure could be a bit of both it, it happened literally in a week honestly um, I mean if you've seen the video from December it was looking really fantastic and then that week of because it was a mixture you get the cold at night and then you get the sun during the day so it could have been either could have been both um, but if you look down here here growth there we go new growth so I'm really pleased about that it's still obviously not not want to chucked any roots out yet but the fact that there's new growth coming tells me that the roots will hopefully pop up the other side underneath I don't know if I've ever shown you my prayer plant prayer plant seems quite happy I did divide it last summer because it went massive so I've got two of these and that seems to be coming back it doesn't do much really it just uh, it just shows you lots of nice hairy leaves and um, the uh, black eyed susan thongbergia brownie that's showing some blooms here and beginning to work its way along lots of blooms on there so i've put some feed in there now um i mean the the mandavella just going crazy it's shooting things off all over the place uh, but i'm happy to let it because it can go right the way up there and you can see it's just up on the roof there. The uh, Charascantia purpurea, I took a cutting of that two days ago and the cutting just keeps flowering, <laughs> just keeps blooming. I stuck it in vermiculite, vermiculite is brilliant for rooting um, Charascantia, well worth, a, well worth a go if you've not done that already. It's like a pedal, pedal them, quite happy, it's got a growth there, it's got another one on the other side so I'm really really pleased for that one to come because I believe that one's a tricky one. Um, and I'm glad to claim some success finally after all the all the failures. Well, they're not total failures, but I suppose it's me learning, isn't it? <clears throat> Speaking of learning, the worst worst looking Miltoniopsis in the world is about to bloom. Now I know what you're saying. You know, save the plant, sacrifice the flowers. But you know, I've been that mad with this one, trying to get it to do something, trying all sorts of different things that I want to remind myself why it's worth saving. So I'm going to let it bloom briefly anyway. I want to see this flower, maybe the next one, and then I will cut them off and then give it a chance. The fact that it's still moving tells me that it's not dead completely. It's not decided to give up the ghost completely. It's looking better since I've moved it to the warmer side. It does seem to be going to dry to be drying out now. Um, but whether it's got any new roots, I'm kind of low to have a look yet. I'll just, I just want to see this flower just to remind me that it's worth it. And then we might have another look at it at some point. Remember I potted these way back? Oh gosh, my arm. It's painful. I don't know, I've got something, some kind of tendonitis in my arm. Uh, where are we? Spectabilis. Miltonia Spectabilis. We potted 11th in November. 2019 and you did see that one I, I did do that one that was early on in my orchid career and uh, I've learned quite a lot since then but it's definitely a lot greener and it seems very very happy and I hope I get some blooms on that I did do it into two pots and that's what they are over there it's looking a lot better than it was originally so that's the warm side and I think we're all updated there um, Nothing else to show, I don't think. Just go back here to the cold side. The Miltoniopsis is not this one. <laughs> Why do I want to call that Miltoniopsis? Slogeny, Slogeny Cristata. I mean, it does look, I keep looking at these bulbs thinking, these pseudobulbs thinking, oh, they need to plump out, they're not, they're not getting enough moisture, but I don't know, maybe that's just the way they look. I have watered it and it certainly looks healthy enough and since I sprayed it, I don't know if you can see, I said I'd keep you up to date, didn't I? 
but it it's not as bad. I've sprayed it a couple of times now, and they're certainly not going any worse, these brown bits. I think the fading, the, the, they're better than they were, definitely. I think the thing, the thing with the fungus fighters, I'll show you what I've been using, actually. I'll just grab it. There we go. The thing with these fungus fighters, if you read it, it tells you to do it a few times. It tells you to do it, do it once, obviously, and then do it, like, about a week later and then a week after that. And that seems to have made the difference. So I've done that. And it's, they've, like, got better. It's the same with the Tredescantia. Um, the, the, the Tredescantia, the... Where are we? This one, you can see the brown spots on it, but you can also see the new growths, which are showing the leaves like they should be. They're a lot darker, they have a better sheen to them. So I keep spraying these every week or so, just to make sure. And the same with this one over here. This one doesn't look quite as good, but you can still see the new growths. Um, I mean, it might not be the humidity that caused that. It might be the fact that I'm using water, but water. Um, oh, the lights have just gone off. So, uh, what else? My, I'm trying to read it. Uh, Bougainvillea, Bougainvillea brasiliensis is it's still kind of in suspended imani uh, imani imani suspended animation. Easy for me to say. It's not grown anything like that. It's not grown from that point or that point for about two, three months now. Um, and I've lost a couple of leaves. I'm hoping that it begins to show some signs of growth soon now that it's warming up a little bit. Uh, I think that is that. Uh, nobly, there's no ID dendrobium nobly, it's going to bloom again. Um, quite a short time after the last blooming, actually. Star class, that keeps doing its thing, and there's another one over here. Another star class, but again, this is one, it doesn't seem to, see how these blooms are kind of, kind of going black, and they go, they're almost opening like that. I think it just, again, it doesn't like the cold, it didn't like going down to 8 degrees, even though it does say in information online information that it will go lower the blooms don't like it the plant doesn't seem to mind but the blooms don't like it i've got there we go um above four degrees so that it says that it can go down to four degrees celsius um but you can see can't you from the blooms there i can show you again again that one up there look see how they're kind of going brown they're not so happy to go so low. Um, the one that Ed gave me, the Fragmopedia Mains Worthy Eye. New growth there, so I'm hoping that's going to do something. Actually, can I... I'm not sure whether there's not a spike in there. I don't know, I've never had a Fragmopedia before, but we'll... Uh, feel, yeah, it does feel like there's a, there's, a, there's a definite bulge. Pardon my language. In the, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, you know these cyclamen are going over now. They think it's summer. Uh, yeah, so things are looking looking nice. I'm really pleased with things. The ferns are going crazy. This asparagus one here. If you want a bit of greenery in your greenhouse, get one of these. That's just going in all directions. Asparagus fern. It's nice to have a bit of greenery. And that one. What's that one? Terris critica. Terris critica fern. Critica. Cretisa, Cretisa, Terris, Terris Cretica. And, you know, I did a video about flabodiums. So that's my flabodium. Now, this was one that was in a pot, <laughs> in an orchid pot. Um, but yeah, it's nice. It's nice to have a little bit of greenery. Um, I'm going to repot this on Cidium Sweet Sugar soon, because, I mean, these are, they don't seem to want to fall off, but they're all wrinkled. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm loath to kind of chop it off. And that does have a new growth coming as well down there. So I don't kill absolutely everything. <laughs> it's uh, It's been a challenging winter, and I'm officially declaring it over. Um, what day are we on? It's actually the 16th when I'm filming this, so I'm hoping that by the time you see it, it'll be springtime officially. My Pleurothalis for Strepioides. It's looking better, actually. I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to give it another chance. A little new leaf on there. I think it, it was just in such a poor condition uh, when I repotted it that 
I had a bit of a downer on it. The the little babies seem okay. Nice new leaves there. So no no new growths on it yet. We'll see with that one. Um I think that is it. I think we're done. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this little anti coronavirus video. It's a, a positive one. It's all about growth and new beginnings and springtime. And if you agree with me, drop me a like. If you don't, well, there's no hope for you. So that's it for now, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.